Hi, I'm Angelique, and welcome back to our continuing series in QCT 6 support. We're going to continue to work in Pro, and we're going to look today at QuiltCAD. In a previous video, we showed you how to use the record feature, and in a couple of videos before that, we showed you how to use PatternCAD. So now we're going to do is we're going to take designs that we've created and designs that are available for you in QCT6, and we're going to audition them on our quilt top before we even take a stitch. That's what Quilt CAD can do for you. So we are going to start out in simulation mode. So grab your tablet or your computer and follow along with me. And then once I show you how to do that, we're then going to do some stitching. So let's head over to the machine that I have set up and get started. Quilt CAD is really kind of fun and neat to work in because it really gives you an opportunity to try different quilting patterns before putting on your quilt and getting that overall feel and big picture of what it's going to look like. If I am in simulation mode and my blocks are supposed to be six by six, I can go in and I can say what that block height is. You can also set the total quilt size. I can also indicate the number of blocks as well. So across here, I have the equivalent of eight blocks on some of those rows. For the doubt, I'm just gonna leave it at five. I actually have 10, so I could set that, but I'm really just gonna focus on the top half of my quilt for right now. And that's gonna give me what that grid would look like. Another thing that I like is that you also have the measurement feature like you do in some of the other parts of the program. So so I can pick a block and I can line up my needle to the edge of that block and click that left button and then take it to the bottom and line that up and click that right button and apply this measurement. And what it does when I go to size is it shows me what the actual block height is. So if you already have kind of created a quilt while you are in simulation mode, you can open that here. Um, I do have one that I was playing with for this quilt and that's gonna bring up all the work that I have done before. If I wanna get rid of my entire design, I'm gonna go to this X. If I only want to get rid of like say a couple of things I would highlight on those so as you see as I click on different block squares that are represented in this grid they will highlight blue and so whatever tools that I'm doing that is what it's going to focus on and so this is the block X that's specifically going to get rid of what I put in those blocks. Here I have an undo tool, then you have your redo tool. So your left arrow undo, right arrow redo. Your plus button here is going to allow you to uh, zoom in at a particular block. And now you can take a look at that specific placed pattern. Clicking it again returns you to the screen. Now I want to look at layout. Layout allows you to select a pattern and place that pattern. You have buttons to select or unselect and highlight blocks. It's really just kind of very quick ways that you can select things if you want to place the same pattern over and over again. Before I want to start placing my patterns, I want to have what my quilt is. And so my quilt has sporadically through it these very large blocks, which are 12 by 12-ish, and they're bordered with some six by six blocks and they're not always in the same place. So I can use this merge feature to pull four of these blocks together to make that 12 by 12. I have another one right here on row two, so I can merge that. And then I have another one that starts here on three and it's right on the end. All right, so now I have those differences in the blocks you can do. If you have like longer ones, whatever, it just kind of allows you that flexibility. In our tools section, we have triangle blocks, diagonals, so I can set it like this and it's gonna give me those two triangles. Maybe I only have one triangle and something else. So the check boxes here allow you to specify if I want all of them. I can do diagonals in other ways, right? So you can see this one's more horizontal. Again, same thing. 
The check boxes will indicate if you want both or just one. I could do a crisscross, and so I would get the four triangles, or maybe you've got one where you've got something big open here and so on. You could repeat the pattern. I can repeat a pattern, and then I can tell it how many times I want to repeat that pattern in that particular block. So if I want it nested, or if I want it separated, I can center it. Another thing is the row rippling. Let's say I want to put this pattern all the way across here, and I place that pattern. I can change or ripple the way that this pattern is going. If I want to do more of a zigzag, this is going to give me that. And and this is my top, so I can be specific. I only want it to zig on the top, or I only want it to zig on the bottom, or I want it to zigzag on both sides. So as it goes across, it's gonna look something like that. Or maybe you want it a little bit more rounded, like hills and valleys. And you could do arches. You can also invert it, so maybe I want to flip the way that it looks right now, right? I can do that. I can also actually fiddle with where I want those, like how many of those ripples that I want, um, just by kind of clicking the, the numbers here and they go in half units. Let's actually figure out what I wanna do with this quilt. There was a pattern that I created, what I called Ferris Wheel 2. So I'm gonna place that pattern and I really want it to come very close to touching each of the sides. So if I want it to actually touch, I'm gonna to max it out, which I did here, but I want it to be just barely not touching, which is my preference. So now I have to kind of decide what I want to do in my small blocks. So I'm going to go again to select pattern and hit open. And let's say I want to do this throughout the top part of the quilt here. And I'm going to place the pattern. I could do these as individual stipples if I wanted, but usually if I, I want to kind of create more of a uniform look, then I want this to connect. So if I max these both directions here, I'm going to get that, that stippled look. And so now as I look at that, I'm not really sure that's what I want. And so I'm just going to clear that out. So let's look at a couple of other patterns. Maybe I'll do this fill one here where my Lemoyne stars are. So I'll go ahead and place that pattern and maybe do a different pattern in between. But I'd really like them to touch, so we'll go ahead and do the max thing by highlighting everything and kind of take a look at that. But then what I noticed is with me bunching these two up, I get a really complex pattern here, but I do like how I get a little bit of complexity and then it simples out. So I think I'm gonna rechange this one to be more like this. So I'll place that pattern. And I think I wanna alternate that on all of the rows. All right, so we're going to grab the one and highlight the one we want to copy, click our copy button, and then highlight the cells or the blocks where we want that to go by hitting our paste. As you see, if I do the copy and paste, it takes it exactly the way I have it, including its expansion. Now I am ready to place this. Now you can save directly from here. All right, now I'm ready to sew. Since I'm really gonna treat this as a place as I go pattern, I can just do place as a single pattern. I am only gonna highlight those specific areas of my plan here that I want to quilt this time. So I've highlighted those four and I'm gonna click place as a single pattern. Pattern placement, we have a previous video on that, so I'm just gonna kind of briefly go over it with you. I am gonna do a four point placement. So I'm going to line up this first corner where my needle is, and I'm gonna hit the top left node, the little, that turned now green, right? So that is placed. The gray ones are not placed yet. I can drop down to the placement of this next one, click on it, it turns green. Green means go. Move over to the top of the other side. Get it about where I want it. Slide this down. 
You can see that my quilt top isn't perfectly straight on here. That is what's great about pattern placement. It really allows you to show the, the machine and the automation exactly where things need to be. All right, so I have it on fit. That's what I want. I'm just gonna move on to quilt. Before I get into the actual quilting, now that I'm in this screen, I am gonna check my settings. And I have it on medium. I have selected how I want it to do the tie off. So it's going to do micro stitching and I can indicate how many I want up to four. I could change it to a back and forth stitch. I don't really love that one for this particular set of patterns since that's all gonna be in the center anyway. And in fact, since it is in the center, I'm probably gonna drop it down to three because I'm already going to have a lot of thread there. Um, you can have it pause on trim lines because if we take a look at this under optimized, you're going to see because of the placement of the different patterns that I did here and how the machine's going to stitch it, um, even if I change my numbering or if I try from right to left, I'm going to have trim lines. So there's really nothing on this one that I can optimize. So I'm gonna leave it as is. And so you can actually now see that on here where those trim lines are gonna be. So kind of going back to those settings, um, I can have it pause with the trim lines if I want, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to reach in and cut as I go and fix my back once I finished everything off. Uh, stitches per minute, I've set it at 11. Um, 10 was a little too big for me. 12 was a little too small for the designs that I picked. So I'm kind of going in between with an 11. So I like those settings and now I'm ready to sew. So I'm gonna start with clicking pull up bobbin and I had it set to automatically pull up the bobbin, which means it is going to move the machine to the start point for me. The needle's gonna drop and then the machine's gonna move for me. And I'm gonna hold both my top thread and my bobbin thread. I'm gonna hit sew and that's gonna move back and it's going to start to sew and as it does that I'm just slightly gently pulling to keep that in place as it does those tie off stitches and it's going to start. And so now we're just stitching out the design that we developed on our quilt pad. So you can see my blocks aren't perfectly aligned, so I could, if I wanted to, instead of doing this as a full pattern, I could literally do one block at a time as well. Doesn't really bother me because there's going to be so much overlap in the different ones. I think it's going to give it kind of a fun look. But that's where, you know, playing with the different features of pattern placement, measuring your blocks and all of that um, is beneficial depending on what it is you want. So as you can see, it kind of stopped. Um, it gives me this long tail and I'm going to trim that and it's going to do the tie off again and move on to the next one. So we're going to finish this row up and then when we come back um, from this, I'll go ahead and move my quilt top and I'll show you just so you can see that when you do develop patterns in Pattern CAD, how they will behave um, on your quilt, any, uh, anything that you need to do to kind of like fix them so that they're ready to go. So we'll, we'll do that. We're just going to let this finish up. All right, so then the last thing I want to show you is what it's like to stitch from Pattern CAD. So I'm going to start by just uh, selecting a pattern that I've already created. And so this is what it's going to look like. And I am gonna just fiddle with it a little bit. And so I just have this weird one here. And I can go to optimize and I can see that that's gonna create me some issues. So I can go back and zoom in. I'm gonna turn my nodes back on because I need this and this node to snap together and that should fix that problem. And so now my starting and stopping points in the same place, that's why I only have one. And so I, this looks pretty optimized. I can take a quick look at the, this animation of the stitching just to kind of see. And 
I'm happy with that, so I can hit OK. So I'm going to click Quilt, and it's going to prompt me to save because I made some changes. So just like when I was in the Quilt CAD, if I'm in Pattern CAD, and I've designed a pattern, and I'm ready to quilt it, it takes me to Pattern Placement. And again, I'm going to do that for Point Placement. So remember, when the node is green, it is set. That looks pretty good. You can see I have it in fit. I could try stretch, but fit's going to just kind of keep it within those borders. Um, if I want to adjust a little bit, I do have those options. So happy with that placement, with the size and how it's going to go on this block. All my settings are going to be the same as how I set them before because I haven't changed anything. So as you can see, once you've kind of learned one skill, there are some places where that skill is going to repeat for you. So it, it's, it's going to get real, real um, comfortable going through all these processes. And I just really wanted to show you how it's, how it's very similar. Well, we're done quilting our pattern, and I really hope that this video has inspired you and helped you decide what version of QCT6 that you need. I really like the pro version because it allows me to be a little bit more creative and come up with my own designs. If you have QCT Pro at home and you wanna know a little bit more about some of the features I showcased today, if you go into your user manuals here, you will see a list of uh, a PDFs that give you some more information with detailed images and pictures and so on of um, quilt CAD and, and uh, pattern placement, some of those things that I mentioned as well. Isn't quilt CAD really neat? It's so interesting to be able to play with different patterns and get an idea of what they're gonna look on blocks and change different things so that you can see block sizes that fit your actual quilt and the fact that you can start stitching right from that program. It's just really fun way to figure out what it is you wanna do before you get started and make any mistakes. So hopefully this video has helped you Find ways to use Quilt CAD when you start designing your next quilt patterns. Thank you for joining me and like and subscribe to our channel for more great content.